The report comes back from the eye specialist. Nothing wrong with his eyes. His eyes are perfect. Oh? Well then how come this one can read and that one cannot? Perhaps it's because this one is not reading with these eyes. Do we have any other eyes beside these eyes? There is no more important question that can be asked by anyone who is a student of knowledge than this question. <laughs> this is called epistemology, the branch of knowledge which studies knowledge. Do we have any other eyes beside these eyes? The modern world of secular scholarship says no. The Quran says yes. Afalam yasiru fil ar. Will they not travel to the earth? Perchance that by traveling to the earth, the dead heart might come alive. Fatakuna lahum kulubu yaakiluna biha. And they'll now be able to understand what otherwise they could not. And they can now hear what otherwise they could not hear. For innaha la ta'amal absar. It's not these eyes which are blind, says Allah. It's not these eyes which are blind, says Allah. Walakin ta'amal kulubu lati fis sudur. What is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. And so if this spiritually arrogant chosen people belonging to this Islamic movement and that Islamic movement and that Islamic movement, if they end up internally blind, <coughs> internally blind then they will be like Dajjal they will see with only one eye what will be the consequence Surah Al-Kaf again Surah Al-Kaf answers the question But before we go to the passage in Surah Al-Kaf, we've got to go to Sahih Bukhari. I've written a book entitled Surah Al-Kaf in the Modern Age. And there's a chapter of that book which is specifically dealing with this subject that I'm not going to deal with. Inshallah. Musa alayhi salam has taken Banu Israel over the Red Sea from Egypt into Sinai and then after Allah punished them banned their entry into the Holy Land for 40 years they are now wandering in Sinai they carry with them a mobile masjid a tabernacle a tent and they would pitch the tent from place to place and Musa -Islam would conduct a khutbah and teach Banu Israel so he gave a khutbah upon which a man came up to him and said to him Musa -Islam, what a wonderful khutbah you must be the most learned man in the world that's what they think they are that is what they think they are. We are the last word in knowledge on this subject. That's what they think they are. And Musa Islam replies and says, yes, I am the most learned. And my understanding is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom 
is using Musa alayhi salam to point to Banu Israel. That you, Banu Israel, you believe that you are the most learned in the world. And he's just using Musa alayhi salam. To which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then responded to Musa alayhi salam and said, No, you're not. There is a servant of mine more learned than you are. And he said, I'd like to meet him. We eventually learned that this servant was, we don't know his name. Don't ask me whether he's alive today. Don't ask me whether he's a prophet of Allah. I only know about him what is located in the Quran and what is located in the Hadith and I have no interest in fairy tales. That's not scholarship. We know that he's, he's called Khidr alayhi salam. And when I teach a class of children I call him Mr. Green. Because Khidr means green. Nabi Muhammad والسلام, said that he got that name because he came to a land which was barren. Today, the whole world seems to be like that. For those who see with two eyes. <laughs> He came to a land which was barren and he sat down on that land and everything came out green, lusciously green. Like when an Arab comes to Malaysia, he says, this is heaven, <laughs> greenery all around. Hmm? So Khidr alayhi salam epistemologically represents a different kind of knowledge not knowledge of those who are spiritually arrogant with a chip on their shoulders we are the rightly guided and they are inferior to us they're just like cockroaches the chosen people of the Lord Most High, among, amongst the Muslims now, we have them all over the place. The knowledge of this man is not like a gramophone record. <laughs> not knowledge that comes out of a factory. You memorize this kitab and that kitab and that kitab and that kitab and that kitab. And when you memorize 25 or 55 or 150 kitab, this kitab, that, I am a scholar now. <laughs> and then you spend the rest of your life repeating from memory what you had memorized. Oh, the Quran didn't come down to you. Allah sent down the Quran and he says it again and again and again and again. He has sent down this Quran لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ He has sent down this Quran to a people who not only think, but fikr is also thinking things out. So this is not mechanical knowledge. No. Khidr alayhi salam represents that kind of knowledge which is like the raindrops which fall from the sky. And when the raindrops fall from the sky, everything that's dead comes back to life. Words which inspire. Not words that you hear again and again and I'm tired of hearing this. Every Friday I go, every Juma I go, it's the same thing over and over and over again. 
I want to meet him, the one who is more learned than I am. And he is Khidr alayhi salam. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to take a basket, put a fish into the basket, and go to the place where the two oceans meet. And that's where you'll meet him. A kind of a cutting him down to size, eh? Just a moment ago, I'm the most learned of all men. And now I have to put a fish in a basket? What does a fish in a basket have to do with the subject? When the fish comes out of the basket, that's where you'll find him. What do two oceans have to do when two oceans meet? What do they have to do with knowledge? It is mind-boggling. I am the elite of mankind. I look down upon the rest. I am the chosen. I have this intellectual and spiritual arrogance. And now I have to be reduced to this? Yes. It is very humbling now. Very humbling. So he takes a boy with him. And the companions of the, uh, uh, the commentators of the Quran tell us it was Joshua. And, uh, and Allah knows best. And they travel. While traveling, they came to a rock. And that is where the story begins in the Quran. And this is a link between Dajjal and intellectual and spiritual arrogance. They stopped at the rock to rest for a while. And Musa al-Islam fell asleep for a while. And when he woke up, they then proceeded beyond the rock. But now suddenly, لَقَدْ لَكِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبَ How many of you have memorized Surah Al-Kaf? Nobody has yet? All right, next time I come, I'll see. Inshallah. This journey has now become wearisome. I'm feeling tired. There was no weariness when you were going towards the rock. The weariness has come upon me after leaving the rock. So long as you were walking on the right direction, there was endless energy, endless enthusiasm for the journey. As soon as you pass the rock and you're in the wrong direction, tiredness descended upon you. Praise be to Allah, who is so kind to his servants. To send such a message to a servant of Allah, telling him you're on the wrong path. From the time you find this tiredness descend upon you, life is becoming wearisome. 